Hi, Robert. How are you? I'm well, Kim, and you? I am well. We are going to get together and we're going to talk about um, some CFPs. You and I have been like talking back and forth actually for probably half a year now about CFPs and submitting them and why don't I get accepted and, you know, it, a lot of the same questions that most everybody has. So we're going to get together and talk about this on this podcast and hopefully give some people some interesting information to take away. Sure, sure, sure. So I guess a little bit of an introduction about myself. I am the, uh, I'm a director in, in, in marketing and I didn't start in marketing. I came from the tech world and I converted, like I, I switched over. I changed to, I went to the dark side, I guess you would say, but your background is not that you are you you were traditionally marketing right am i making sure i speak yeah. correctly actually okay. sales so oh that's yeah. a real dark side right there okay okay yeah, it's real dark. Right. I, I was a good sales person not that sales person i hear i i did pre, <laughs> i i actually did pre-sales for a little bit there and so i i i I guess I would be that would cause that would that would put me in the sales group, right? If you're pre sales engineering, yeah. Like, would, would and you, you know, that, and, and actually, I I really think, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, put this upon you as well that I I think that sales experience really makes us better at what we do from marketing and community because although we're not talking about that today, something that you and I talk a lot about is not mining our database of community members to be uh, a sales lead, right? I mean, so, but- yeah. uh, I, did yeah, a video, so I did a video on that and it's something I'm very passionate about. And it happens every, like it's it's every once in a while that comes up, people want to talk, like, I'm like, what do you do? It's still, that's not, but that's not for here. Um, we're talking here, CF but do share the video. I'll put it in the notes since we did talk about it. But yeah, so um, your background came from technical and you, mm -hmm. it, when you talk about this, you feel like you're not a very good quote unquote marketer or, but I will use advocate. I think you are, but and my background is, is marketing and, and uh, not, I have more of the technology, understanding the technology enough to talk about it. So anyway, so we're, we're so I, a lot, like most of the engineers I deal with, I hate CFPing. I hate it. It is this. This it is not a logical. It is not a logical process. There's too much human interaction in there. <clears throat> There's not enough transparency. I mean, for being an open source, a CFP process. I don't care who you are. I've not seen one where it's clear and concise. Now I know that you have been part of a, a doing like a CFP thing, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you've been on the other side. So yeah. I have a ton of questions. I think in this one, we're going to kind of flip it a little bit and allow me to go, how does this work? Because yeah. uh, especially when you're doing tech CFPs, it's heartbreaking at times. Like, I, I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I've cried. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but it's like, damn, I, I thought I wrote something really well. And mm -hmm. it, it might not be me. So if I'm a submitter and we're going to say you are a reviewer, right? Yeah. Um, how does this work? Like, 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 like what, how does this work? How does the CFP process work? Yeah. So, I, so I will share my experience, um, but I will say it is my experience and it's how I approached it. Um, mm -hmm. In, in uh, the couple times that I've done this one time, uh, I didn't have access to anybody. I didn't have access to the event team or the program committee or anybody. Like nobody gave me any guidance. They just gave me a bunch of CFPs to review. And I approached it how I felt was a good way to approach it. And then another time I was the head of marketing for a foundation and planning the event and part of the CFP process, working with the community. So I just want to caveat that as I share this, Robert, it's... Mm -hmm and listeners, uh, this is how I approached it. And this is my experience. Now there's, uh, other people are gonna have a different experience and different way to approach, but I'll be happy to share with you how I did it and maybe it'll provide some insight. Um, so you started out by asking, so I wanted to go through um, most conferences have a structure of what uh, for the program committee. Um, the Linux Foundation conferences uh, really pride themselves on being community run, run conferences. So you have your event team, um, Angela Brown and her whole team of event organizers 
there is somebody on that team who manages the CFP process for the large Linux foundation events, for example. And um, they work with the owner of the event. Um, often, at least with LF, in my experience, it was the executive directors. You work and their marketing people with those owners of the event. And what's the vision that you have for the event? Um, <clears throat> And then from there, the an organization may choose an event chair or co-chairs um, who then who have deep technical knowledge in this area and they will come together and say, okay, this is based on what you were trying to accomplish, CNCF, RISC V, CIVO Navigate, this is what we what we recommend for you know this for this event, these kind of technical topic areas. Then they will often create or designate or ask for volunteers for a set of track chairs who have who will be responsible for a specific track and then setting kind of the the vision for that track that flows up the vision up the ladder there and then those track chairs and event organizers they get a bunch of reviewers who um, review the CFPs and then make a recommendation on that piece of content so CFPs come in, there's a handful of ways you guys do it. How do you keep that organized? Because I've used like, you know, I don't know, I, I mostly sessionized, mm -hmm. but I've had people just fire an email <clears throat> for you guys on the other side, like this, the program committee, right? Or the selection committee. Um, is there a, like a, a tools that you guys use for like, how does this work? Cause like, it's all over the place. Is it organized? Yeah. Yeah, the event organizers, typically whoever is, um, you know, like the event program manager will say, hey, here's the tool that we think we should use. And and Linux Foundation has gone to Sessionize. I think our old tool, was it Cvent? I don't even remember anymore. Um, but they've gone to Sessionize. Um, and and then for another event I did, uh, I don't remember how we, ga how we gathered, how or how the event team gathered the submissions to the call for proposals but I was reviewing them in a Google sheet. So, okay. uh, which uh, that was painful. <laughs> so with session eyes um, and, in, and in both situations, what we get is whatever fields that are part of that CFP, such as the title and the abstract, um, you know, a, a lot of times events will ask like, hey, how is this gonna benefit the audience or the ecosystem or why should we care about this talk? Um, They'll, some of them ask if you're a first time speaker or if you're a diversity candidate. So whatever those fields are that you fill in um, when you review that CFP or when you submit your CFP, that's what we see. Now, mm -hmm. in my past past, um, when I was part of high performance computing, uh, they actually, they did what was called a double blind review, meaning that um, you, you would get the, you would get all the information about the submission but there would be your name would not be there. There'd be no 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 theoretically personally identifying information, and they they were doing oh. that, um, you know, so that you know people were they were doing that with, with the theory behind it that that would lessen people maybe not choosing women speakers or not choosing oh. speakers from some sort of um, country, for example, right. Um, and so I, don't we would take, many, I don't know many conferences that do that, what they call the double blind anymore, but that is that's interesting. Option. So it just, it, it, it's a way of just taking out a bias. Like you read a name, you're like, oh, that's, you know, traditional, you know, cis female name or, you yeah. know, it wouldn't have a name. It wouldn't have your bio, nothing. So um, the ones that I, the, the call for proposals I've been reviewing lately have included that bio, if that is part of your, you know, part of what okay. you when you submit it to the CFP. So we get all that information in whatever format the event organizers have chosen to give that to us. All right. So, okay, this might not be, be, pertain to it, but when you get all that information, is it like categorized to like the talk tracks? like, Or is it all in one and you're trying to go, which one are they talking to? What track? Or, or, do they, or is it nice enough where they go, Hey, this was submitted under this talk track, you know, and so you know what context to put it in or no? Yeah. So, so uh, 
A couple times that I've done it, um, I was reviewing um, papers, submissions in a specific track and a specific topic area. Um, okay. and that was like open source and community, which is really my expertise. I've had one situation where I'm not sure the event even had talk tracks, I, maybe, or if people submitted them that way, because I was reviewing every single submission and they were just all over the board from, you know, technical to community to deep technical. So um, it kind of depends on how the event organizer sets it up. Okay. So when you're reviewing in that process, you're looking at it, you're comparing it to others and you weight it versus it would be high. I, I imagine it has, to, it has to be hard to like weight all of them. I mean, what if you have like 200 of them in a talk track, and you're looking through all that, like how, I mean, that has to be daunting. So when you're rating them, how do you rate them? And what do you kind of, is it just the good talk? Does it match the, the, the what the feel of the, the talk track should be? Like, how, how does that work? Yeah. Um, so, so we, you, you give it a rating, typically it's a one to five. Um, mm -hmm. in some situations you, you could get, uh, they would, um, in, in one situation I had it, we had, a couple different categories. You can give it a, a one to five on how technical it was. If, it, if, if you thought it was a good technical talk and a one to five on some other criteria that they were grading against, I can't even remember anymore. But um, my, you know, yeah, you, you have this talk and I review it and you rate it on one to five and then you have the ability to enter comments. Now, okay. when on one of them that I recently did via Sessionize, um, I looked at, I opened it up and I thought I, you know, I could see 30 talks. I'm like, oh, this is great. I can go through and I can review these, read them, and then go back and, and go ahead and grade them. Um, but uh, it turned out I really had more like 130. And um, and at that point, it wasn't like I could comp really compare them against each other. So I started the process thinking I was going to compare compare them and, and choose the best talks and and pivoted to rating each talk on its own merit. If I thought it was going to be a good talk and of value to the audience for that event. Okay, so you, I mean, this is a kind of an odd question, but maybe you can help me understand. What if like I submitted a really good talk and you're like, this is good but it was in the wrong talk track. Do you guys like throw that back and just, or just deny like how did like. Um, no, they, it would, it, it, well, I know that for, um, for the uh, Linux foundation events, if it's in the wrong talk track, we would move it. We would send it over to, we would change the talk track. You know, it's like, oh, okay. oh no, this does not fit here. This might be good for here. And that I would then talk to that track lead and say, hey, I think this talk is good for your track. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. We changed talk track. Bam, it's over there and it's getting reviewed. Okay. Along. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Now you're relying on the person reviewing it. Um, and there's multiple reviewers. Like, I, you know, there's not just one reviewer of all these. There's multiple people reviewing the call for call for papers. They're reviewing the abstract submitted. And so you're re really relying on that human to say, oh, I think this talk might be better here, for example. And then you go through all of that has been solidified. We, you guys will sit, pick your talks that you guys want to, as, as a committee and say, hey, these are the talks, notify the submitter, right? And then what's like, is it like the, the scheduling, I guess? Like what, what's, yeah, how did I, well, you know, so no. I, well, uh, so in, in, when I, when I was part of a, a couple events, we, we reviewed them all. Um, they got a score. Our event program manager came back and said, here, you know, we know we had X number of slots. Here's, here's what we have. Here's how we recommend that we schedule it. And, and at that point, then we would potentially find, um, you know, and it, so you're going to give somebody even an, a, they're going to get an accept or a wait list. And then if we find gaps in the schedule, then we I, we've been able to go back and look at the wait list ones and say, come up off the wait list. We have a we found we had we found another half hour for you or something. Right. So in our schedule and could add. another. So, and, so then, it and, like yes, and then those emails. So once. Then, you know, once we've all gone through it and um, the the person managing the process has shown the um, owners of the event, the community, whoever, 
owns that event. Um, here's the talks that are accepted. They review them. They're like, yes, I think this makes a good, a good event. Then those letters go out saying you've been accepted or not. So it almost sounds like, especially when you've never done a CFP and you're starting to get out there, it almost sounds like you don't know the other side, but there's like almost like a weird kind of relationship that you have because you're putting as a submitter, you're kind of putting some motion on this paper. Like, I don't know how anyone else writes an abstract, but you know, I put, sometimes I put some thought into it. I know you can't tell when you read mine, but there's a lot of thought into it. They're that terrible people. Like she'll, she, she's seen them. Um, and it's others out there who have re read my CFPs, you know how bad they are, but there's like a weird relationship that, the submitters really don't know that they have with that reviewer because the reviewer is the, you know, they might know the person personally, most of the time they probably don't, but they're reading through this and, you know, they're trying to kind of almost extrapolate what they're trying to say. And the few lines that you do get in a CFP, I mean, not often you get like a whole page. It's usually like, you know, a couple hundred characters at most. Right. Yeah, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than a couple hundred characters. A couple hundred characters is typically the title. But yeah, it's it's I think it's like 2000 characters, maybe, um, which okay. is a paragraph or two. Um, and that's where it's important as a submitter that you you think about what you're trying to what 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 do you want your talk to accomplish? Like, why mm -hmm. why are you giving this talk? What do you want the listener the person attending your presentation, what do you want them to come away with? And, and what do you want them to know when they're done? And then sit down and and write what, what it is you're going to be delivering during this talk that's going to produce that your your hopeful hoped for outcome, if that makes sense. So um Often my process, what I have done when I've been on the other side, because I have submitted to many, many um, CFPs, uh, I will write out kind of what I want to do. I, like I may write my abstract and then I look at that and I think, okay, what do I want somebody to walk away way with from my presentation? And did my abstract describe that? No, it didn't. And then I go in and edit. But for me, a good abstract and from a reviewer standpoint is when I review that, I know what it is you're trying to get across to somebody and how it, how it's going to be a good thing for them. Got it. Got it. Got it. It's almost like me trying to convince my kid in a five words or less why his clothes need to go in the hamper. And I need to be able to do that without yelling. And I think it's the same type of like <laughs> conveying it in a few words, do it without yelling and putting that in there. That's interesting. Um, so yeah. I, you know, I, I, I wanna, can we can we dig into I really want to dig into this in a few words part oh, of okay. the comment that you you had because as a reviewer um you know and some people are not natural writers like we already talked about this you 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 you're a developer I'm a marketer I I can I can, I can write pretty I can write a good paragraph a good concise paragraph that makes sense and takes people uh, through the journey of what I'm trying to accomplish or what I'm trying to get across to them. Um, I suspect just based talking with you, Robert, that you that's a little harder for you to do. And- uh, I wouldn't say it's harder. I, I don't mince words. I'm very direct, like I put your clothes in the hamper, clothes in hamper. Right. Whereas oh, okay. you, you would probably like, I would assume if I knowing the way our conversations go, Kim would, would put this whole thing of, you know, those clothes really need to go to the hamper, the, the emphasis, you know, you would put emphasis on, you know, how it helps everybody out. And, you know, the, the, the ecosystem of the house is happy because mom is happy or dad's happy. Parents are happy because this is done. Like you, you are very eloquent with that. And what I'm kind of feeling, maybe I'm wrong here is that, you can't be just direct to the point. Your CFP can't be, oh. mm -hmm. I'm doing this, submitting this talk because my boss is making me. That's not, that will never work. If it does work, someone please let me know because I want to, I want to, I have plenty of <laughs> But that's like, right? Like yeah. you have to, you have to be less direct, less logical. And you're asking a person, um, most engineers are hyper logical people. Um, mm -hmm. You're asking them to not be logical, not be, right what they do every day, take a step out of that mindset and eloquently put some words together 
to craft yeah. a, an, an emotion in two paragraphs. Yeah. Yeah. I guess as opposed to, um, this is how you put your clothes, this is where your clothes go in the hamper, right? It, it, yeah. Using it instead of, or, or this is, uh, you know, this is how you do an operator with Kubernetes. And that's what I'm going to talk about in my talk. And, and you're right. So for now, somebody who knows what operators and, and Kubernetes and how important they are and what, mm -hmm. what you really are looking for in that may look at that and be like, that's a great talk, but that's, you don't know who's reviewing that. So you, you need to come back and craft a little bit of that story on why somebody cares, you know, uh, you need mm. operators in Kubernetes, you know, because you need that to be checking, you know, authentication and, uh, and this and that, and, and, and that's important. And I am going to show you how to use this operator in Kubernetes to do what it is you need to do in your environment. So yeah. Um, yeah. Engineers, developers are very, uh, many of them are very straight and to the point. That's how their brain works, but you do need to add a little bit of that. Why would one care? Let, let me show you how happy the house is when my clothes are in the hamper. <laughs> right. Right. So with, so with that, you know, we're thinking about those and I, 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 you know, I used to close in the hamper instead of the, uh, the toilet seat down analogy. So you should thank me for that. The audience should thank me, but that would have been funnier. But some of the things like, I guess we could, I mean, so when I'm looking at, I'm about to submit a CFP or actually no, I'm about to write the CFP. First point would be what just, you know, hmm. knowing that you're coming in there to write something a little more eloquent, a little less direct, um, and still, you know, so you have to kind of you almost change the way you're thinking, right? Less logical, maybe, but more empathetic to the audience. Well, because of that relationship between the submitter and a reviewer. Well, right? Or yeah, am I wrong so with this one? I, yeah, I, you know, I don't want to take out, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to change your personality <clears throat> here, but let's say you you give me an example of of a technical topic that you would love to present. Oh, um, why are you putting me on the spot like right right now? I don't know. You want to? I how about I, K I, K three uh, uh, K three S K three S and yeah. it's remote. Air gapped K three S air gapped right there, okay. air, meaning not connected to the internet. Okay, there you go, and and it's open source, and it's mm -hmm. a technology that you're familiar with, and you um you think it, it in 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 your experience you've used it, and you you know it it really improves a Kubernetes environment, improves and improves an environment. Well, some environment. What environment does it improve? How does it help? So, so you start thinking about, so you have this technology topic, you know, you love the product or the technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why does, how does it help somebody? And then when would you use that? Like what kind of environment would you use that in? So, so you're starting to craft a story and this is where the marketing is part comes in. And, you know, and, and frankly, go ahead and find Find one of those people who are a little more on your marketing or community side to help you craft it. But crap, you know, start talking about not just the technology, but why, when would you use it? How is it going to help you? Um, maybe in your in your abstract, you talk about the benefits you get from using that technology. Because so it's not just um, you know this technology is great. This technology is really good because it helps do this in your environment. So if you are this kind of person trying to do this, you will benefit from this talk. It it it, it solves a problem, right? It's not don't yes. use it for the sake of using it. Okay, all right. Yeah. So if we transition a bit, right? You've you've been on the other side. I've only been on the submitter side, and I I it's it's rough. But as a reviewer, let's go through like. What are some of the things as a reviewer, like, I don't want to say pet peeves, but like one of those, like, no, 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 this, like, work on these things. Yeah. So again, I'm going to caveat this, that this is, this is me. Um, this is how I approach it. Uh, mm. I have written many call and submitted to many call for proposals. And I spend a lot of time, I, I spend a lot of time and thought doing it. And if, and 
when I read you, when I read them, you know, you can tell which ones and I'm saying everybody always spends lots of time, but if you've spent the time to do, to submit a thoughtful, submit to the submit thoughtfully to the call for proposals, I really feel that I owe it to you to give it a thoughtful read. So some, some pet peeves, um, things that, uh, that I think are not maybe that you didn't didn't think enough about it, weren't thoughtful enough is um, spelling and grammar is one of them. Uh, sure. Like if you don't spell a project name right or the event name right or the company name right that or, or you know, when you start talking about things like that, if you don't if you don't spell those things right, then I'm then I, I'm jumping to an assumption. But that if you can't even do that right in the abstract, how good is your presentation going to be? So that's sure. one of the re what's one thing I one way I would throw okay. that. All right, so I'll, I I work for an international company. I have people from all walks of life and globally, not just the United States. And English for a lot of them is like some, a second language, sometimes a third. Mm -hmm. If I was judged on my German grammar and my German spelling, I'd be like, I, I'd like it'd be over with. Is there considerations if English is a second language where you're just like, they might not have, like, how do you, I mean, because I don't, it almost feels like that's a gatekeeping, but it's not a gatekeeping because I completely yeah. agree. Great, good spelling and grammar, but it might just have been an oversight on something that, like, how do you reconcile that one? Well, or do you? So I, I guess, let me correct that. I wouldn't say it's spelling and grammar. I would say it's spelling. Like if you can't okay. spell your product name or the event name or your company name right, okay. And really, how how much thought have you put into your into your abstract that you submitted? Now, and you know, I, I've read them where, um, where you know the grammar or the right word or the right verb tense is not there, and I I don't care about that. You know that I, I if I can if I can figure out the context of what they're trying to mm -hmm. say, that's what I'm really reading it on. I'm not reading, I, I'm not reading it. I'm not reading it and grading them on their English. Uh, I'm, I'm reading it for content. So all right. So thank you for having me clarify that. Yeah, uh, no, it's no, th th no, thank you for clarifying that. Um, what else? Like we talked about the abstract, you know, how we had to, you know, kind of tell that story and uh, not, you know, expand deeper than logically why this talk should yeah. happen. What else within that abstract that, you know, I want to say pet peeve, but, you know, what you would judge it on? Well, so when you when you find that you have hundreds to review, if I mm -hmm. open the abstract, is you know, uh, I personally, I yeah, I'm like, oh, that's a lot to read, and um, and it is, it's really hard. It's hard to be concise. It takes a lot of work to write concisely. I will, I will tell you that I'm in marketing. I do it all the time. Like, how can I get rid of, you know, how can I get rid of another fifty words out of this and be more concise and still still get across the same thoughts. So, so it is really hard. Um, and I don't expect everybody to have that skill set, but gosh, reach out to somebody and ask them if they would help you write that to be a little more concise, to help maybe with the flow of what you're trying to get across. Um, ask for help because there's actually, I, I know I'm kind of diverting again on this. There's a lot of people that you will see put out there on, on X that, Hey, I will help review your CFP. I will help. I will help you write a better abstract. Hey, if you're on, if you're on X and you, you, you're, you're volunteering to read my abstract, DM me. I'm, my DMs are open. Be like, <laughs> like DM me. I'm, I'm all in. DM um, me. I'll be happy to read your abstracts. I, I offer it to people all the time. So, the engineers and developers we are terrible at naming anything we will <laughs> that's the hardest thing for us to name so like naming a variable like what do we want to call it and it's usually a sentence like we got pretty bad with it like we would call a variable something like ridiculous with that terrible sense of naming anything titles right i struggle with the title do you want should i be catchy should i be classy should i be like obviously concise and you get like 200 characters, like you said, a couple hundred characters for a title. Like, what are some what are some of the points in your opinion that people need to think about when they they have a title? Well, so for me, um, I hope that the title matches the abstract. But a lot of times, I glance at the title and I go directly into the abstract to determine if this is of value. If this, if I think that this talk is going to fit for this event, um, 
that being said, I think the title gets more important to the conference goer because I think <clears> as a <throat> conference goer, they look at titles and decide if they're going to go to a talk and they and they may or may not read the abstract that that you've written. So for me, no, I I I don't it, like if you decide to say, you know, Mickey Mouse uses Kubernetes as your title. I'm not going to read that and be like, oh, that's a stupid title. If if the abstract is awesome, right? You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't. I personally do not make judgments like that. I I read really? the right. abstract for content. Close and a half her happy parents. So I'm, okay, all right. <laughs> close in that close in the hamper. Yeah. Or happy parents, right there. Like I, I, I <laughs> there maybe you go. next time, maybe next time we we try to we 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 try to come together and come up with a CFP for fun about putting like convincing people to put their clothes in their hamper. I think this would be funny. Um, what what else to think about when you're doing that? Like like is there like you know we talked about the conciseness. We talked about, and I guess I, I mean, I think you said something earlier about it. Maybe like what does it, or I said it like does it solve a like solution right so what is yeah. like is there what is what is the benefit right yeah is so it, don't just come maybe? and tell me something is great or don't just this is great and you should accept me because um this is really this technology topic is hot and everybody wants to hear about it you know mm. me, I'm I'm not you know I I'm sorry I'm just not going to agree with you on that um don't come and tell me that you are who you are in the industry and you always talk on this and you're really awesome at it and everybody comes to your talks and that's why I should accept it. Cause I'm like, hmm, no, I, I think your talk should um, stand on its own merit. And so value. I, I think we're, I think, I think these are like, you're, you're, you sound like your auto nose, right? Like you, I know you, bit, you, have, yeah. you have to have an auto note. Cause I have an auto note with my kids. Like it's an auto yeah. no for a lot of things. Like I see, I'm like, no. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah I I mean I I I had seen some abstract submissions like I am a so and I you know I'm a, a entry level blah blah living here and the talking at this conference would help me so much. Please let me come and talk about Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. so I'm like yeah no, no. Yeah, so you would you would recommend it, dropping in dropping it into your CFP that you're like a a CNCF ambassador probably won't help because we probably already they probably already know right so just you save probably it put from it you. in your bio if you're an ambassador I'm sure you put it in your bio yeah, yeah. you don't need yeah. to waste the characters in your abstract telling me you're an ambassador okay well that, all right that's so, me again that's me right that's you. We, yeah. You've said that like nine times. I think the I, entire well, podcast is your opinion and yeah. what your experiences, which is okay. Um, well, because I, I, I just, I, uh, Robert, you know, I'm just, I, I'm get, I'm bracing for, bracing for impact when people re re the, re listen to our podcast and be like, who oh, do you, think you are, Cam. <laughs> That's why yeah. I have to accept it. I'd be like, nope, I'm only oh. one of many. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I put videos out there. I want to be honest with you. I get I get right through the coals all the time. I know that feeling. <laughs> so we 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 have certain things that you shouldn't do. What other key things like I mean, well, like the for you a pet peeve that you would say, this is an auto no, like you know, AI's hot right now. If I come in going like, hey, AI in the cloud, like, you know, would how how does that one play um, for you? No, I I, I it, it it depends on the it comes but for me ah, I did it again it comes back to what the content is I know um you know if you it, AI is hot and mm -hmm. I would expect a lot of AI topics at upcoming conferences um but at, now that I'm talking through this and thinking about it as a as a person putting together the content for an event mm -hmm. you know if I have 50 AI topics and 20 topics on various other things, and I only have 30 slots, I'm taking 10 AI topics, you know? Like, it, 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 because, you know, I, I I more want a balanced, as an event organizer, I more want a balanced, uh, a balanced, yeah. a balanced type of talks. Unless it's an AI conference, of course, but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it'd be different. It's like you go to a security conference and you expect, you know, different flavors of security, you know, right. It, it might be confidential compute. It would be, you know, secure yeah. container workloads. It might, it'll be all over the place, but it's all still grounded in them. Okay. So one of the things I want to know about, and it's, 
this one still gets me to today. We're never going to get feedback, right? It's rare. And if, you know, because what you think about when I, when I get denied, I think, is it me? Did, is it my, t- my submission? Is it like, is it someone having, per- is it personal or like Robert, I saw his video on community, this, this, and this, and I hate it for that. Is it like, you don't get any feedbacks with it. Right. And so is it, obviously we try not to internalize it. I, I personally try not to internalize it. I, I would recommend anybody who doesn't get feedback on their CFP when you get rejected, do not internalize it. But how, how, how does someone take a talk that they feel is good and get it out there? Cause I, I I'm curious what your recommendations on this us. So it, the question is, how do you, you have this great talk. How do you get it accepted? Is that your question? Well, not necessarily like, but you're never getting feedback, right? I submitted to yeah. a talk. Um, I mean, I'll call it out. I, I submitted to Code Mash, but I, I got no feedback back. I got kind of discouraged. It's, a, it's kind of a regional yeah. thing. I thought, was, I thought it was good. Um, and I kind of like, I took it back. I rewrote it again and submitted it three other places and one of them took it. Right. But like, what is like, you're not going to get feedback. What do you do? Like, what is, what is your recommendation is you you have a topic that you feel is warranted. You hit all those other things. It's concise. It's Mm -hmm. has a cute title. It solves a problem. What does one do for that? Cause you don't want to let it die. I mean, is it really, could it be, could it be your talk or could it just be, you got lost in the process? Yeah. You know, um, I don't think we know. Yeah. I, I don't know when my, when I have some that, that don't get accepted. I, I, is it because I spoke at the last KubeCon and they don't want to have me speak at two KubeCons in a row? I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, you don't, you don't know. You know what I really like about what you did is that you, um, you open sourced your, your conference titles. You have them out there in GitHub repos. People can take a look at them. They can comment on them. They could help you improve them. And and I, I think that's like a really that's a that's a good path if you're if you're trying to kind of crowdsource and and open source and improve your content. It, you know, go out there and ask people. I, how would you you know? Do you have a suggestion for for improving this kind of thing? Yeah, I always I always fear that someone's just gonna take my talk and plagiarize the hell out of it and and use it as their own. But at this <laughs> point, I'm like. Well, let you could deal with the heartache of that getting rejected. Go forth and get rejected <laughs> with that one. I know how many times I get rejected. Let's see if you can beat yeah. it. Um, awesome. I think I got a lot of my questions answered. Um, this was a, this was fun. Um, but anything? I mean, I guess we can wrap this up. Anything? Yeah, like- we can. Um, I think it, it really. Um, uh, I, I think the biggest thing that we all have to remember is we're all humans. Like we got a human writing it and we got a human mm-hmm. reviewing it and you, you know. Or it could be chat GPT reviewing it. Yeah. You never yeah. know. You, like AI, AI could be reviewing your next CFP. You know, I wonder, uh, yikes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Imagine the bias on that. Yeah. Oof. Uh, yeah, that's for another. We'll let's definitely uh, have a conversation Man, on we that. We have like three but, new you know, show the, ideas for you right now. Yes. We have three new show ideas. Yeah, the the whole process is run by humans, and and um, you know, yeah, I, I just we we don't know. I I wish you wish we knew what was going to happen. We wish it could be predictable. Um, but it's just, it's just not. And, and, but I do, I encourage people to continue to submit to them and um, look at other abstracts that were accepted and see if, you know, compare them against yours, if it's a similar topic and it is, are there improvements? You, it, it was there's abstract written a lot better than yours. Do you, can you learn anything by just comparing yourself to successful talks, I guess is, I don't know. I, I, I will say I have one abstract that I like that I wrote and it's been accepted a couple of times and I have notes around it and I keep it up when I write another abstract to remind me of those things. Like why did I, and I reread it and, idea. Over here. and I, I know like, it just like, like it's not copy paste your code. It's just copy. It's just keeping up what I need to know and remember. Cause like we talked about like title and grammars 
that's the but you're but seeing it and seeing it done going like oh that's a really good that, i did that title this way and i was conveying that and i click it was like kind of a clicked with you know so it's just one of those, i do that when i have a really good cfp i have one that i bring up and i'm like i just gotta look at it and i'll work on that we look sure at it, we'll so i can read it, it. <laughs> no, no. You, you'll probably tear it apart and tell me that's no, why i, I, I will not i don't know it. no I don't tear, I don't tear it apart. But anyway, this is great talking with you today and uh, good luck with your CFPs. Let me know how they go. Yep. Two are being submitted today. So thank you. Oh, there you go. And even early, is this open source summit? Yes. And they're, yes, they're due the 14th, right? I mean, it's the 11th. So yeah, they're going to, they're going to go in today or, or tonight. Good for you. Okay. I just want to make sure they weren't due today because, you know, I tend to procrastinate and I got, I got one to submit. So you better do it too. I think I just might do it after this call and get it off my to-do list. Anyway, great talking with you, Robert. Good luck. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.